G'day Trailblazer, my name is Cam and in this video we'll be doing another exercise in Salesforce Marketing Cloud, this time covering the process loops in AMP script. Now just like my previous exercise, we'll be going through a brief together to show how we can use loops in our emails and cloud pages. And just like the previous exercise, I have covered this topic before in a video, so do check out my video on process loops in AMP script before you try out this challenge. Now in the video description below, you will find the links to the resources you need to complete this task. So pause the video now if you want to give this challenge a try for yourself. Otherwise keep on watching as I step through and solve each of these tasks myself. And just like the first exercise for if statements, you can go to the link provided to come to this resource page. You can see here the videos are linked to have a look at the if statement exercise as well as the previous video on for loops. But for today, we're just going to download the briefing document. To do this, we can click on the for loops PDF and press the download button to download that PDF. See, there it is there. And here we go. This is the brief for today's exercise. Okay, so here we have our brief for AMP script for loops. Now the brief today will be built on a cloud page or an email. We do not require any data extensions, so we can get the brief in that link as well. Let's go down to our brief and for our email setup we'll make a brand new email using amp-e02 and our name using a blank page template. Of course you can use a cloud page for this one as well if you choose. Since there is no subscriber data, we're just building for loops using AMP script. And each task will be in sequential order and we can alter the previous task or create a new content block for each task. So we can keep that code if we want. Fantastic. Alright, let's take a look at task number one. Okay, so to start with, let's build that starting email. I'm in Content Builder in Email Studio, of course. Under Content Builder, I've got my brand new folder for this exercise. I'm going to create that new email. Let's go create email message. I'll of course, choose the template and we'll choose the blank page template. Fantastic, go select. For our name, I might choose amp-e02 cam. And we'll just go next. All right, and here is our starting email. Now, the first thing I might do is I'm just going to change the subject line to make it the same as our exercise. So amp E02. Now we have a subject line. And go save. All right, now we're ready to go. So back in our brief, let's have a look at our first task. Now for our first task, we have to use AntScript to create a for loop, which outputs the numbers from one to 10 with each number on a new line. Cool, and the output looks just like that. All right, let's give it a try. So first thing we'll do is make a new HTML content block. We'll drag and drop that in. And now for our for loop. So for a for loop, we need some code block, of course. We'll use some percent signs and square brackets. We'll then say for at i equals one, so starting at one, until we get to number 10, we're going to do something. And then when it's done doing that thing, we're going to return next back to i again. So to start with, we're saying start from 1 up to 10 and do that loop 10 times, ending that function there and returning. Now what function do we do? We're going to output the numbers from 1 to 10. So how can we do this? Well, we can do output, for example. We'll go output and we'll output the value of i. Now we do have to do this in a concat, so it's a new line for each record. So we'll go concat and we'll say i and then break. There we go. So we'll output each time the value and then a line break. Let's give that a whirl. So we'll go next. And of course we can render this with any subscriber record that we have. And we're using our example from the first AMP script exercise here. But that's our result. The output from 1 to 10 with a new record on each line. Fantastic. Okay, so that was pretty easy. What is task number two? Alter your code so the for loop outputs the word even when the number is even and outputs the number when it's odd. Okay, so one even, three even, five even. All right, we can do that. So we'll flick back into our email. We're going to modify our previous one. So now we have to change our code. It's not just cycle from one to ten and output the value, but also check if it's even or odd. So we need to run if statement. So we can say if, we need to check something. So if something is true, then we'll try to check if it's going to be even. So we'll say if it's even. So 
let's even then we're going to produce the even record so I might break my code block and say the word even and then do a line break and then I'll restart my code block again and do the else statement which will be what occurs if the number is odd and so then I'll just put the number I can put the number which you can leave it inside the code block and just use my existing output fantastic and then of course we'll end if our if statement so here's our condition if even now how do we test to see if it's even we can use the mod function the modulo function so we'll say if mod I'm going to check the mod with at i which is the number the record number that we're going through so far so if i by 2 is equal to 0 which means there's no remainder so if we divide i by 2 there's 0 left over which means it must be even and it must be therefore even otherwise it's odd all right let's give that a whirl I'll go next And looking good, one, even, three, even, five, even, fantastic. That is task number two. Okay, and we're doing well so far. Let's try out task three. So for task three, alter your code so that it loops for 100 cycles and implement the rules for a game of fizzbuzz. In fizzbuzz, if the number is divisible by three, then output the word fizz. If the number is divisible by five, then output buzz. If the number is divisible by both 3 and 5, output fizz buzz. Otherwise, output just the number. So we can see here that each result occurs on a new line. So it goes 1, 2, uh, fizz, 4, buzz, fizz, 7, 8, fizz, and so on. All right. There's a reference article here to the Wikipedia page for fizz buzz, plus a great video by Tom Scott discussing the fizz buzz as an interview question. But for now, let's try and solve it ourselves. Okay, so back in our email, let's try out task three. So the first thing we have to do is change our number of cycles from 10 to 100, just like that. Now for our rules of fizz buzz, if it was divisible by three, it's fizz, by five, it's buzz, and by 15, it's fizz buzz. So we can modify our existing code here to start to implement the rules of fizz buzz. There's heaps of ways you can solve this challenge, but I'm gonna choose one particular way that I like which is solving the rules in reverse. So the first thing we do is to test to see if the number is divisible by 15, which is both three and five for fizzbuzz. So I can go if mod 15 is zero, then we can set an output value. So output is equal to fizzbuzz. And if it's not equal to 15, then it's not fizzbuzz. So I'll try something else. So we can say else if, it's divisible by five, then it must be buzz. Else if divisible by three, then it will be fizz. Else we can set our output to be equal to i, which of course is the number that we're cycling through. That's all done, we can end if. And of course we then have to output our value of output. We can copy our existing output code here and change the I value to output. There we are. We can then clean up our code because once that's done, we then cycle back to the top and go to the next number. All right, that should be our rules for fizzbuzz. Let's give that a crack now and go next. All right, one, two, fizz, four, buzz, fizz, looking good, 15 fizzbuzz all the way to 100. Perfect, that is task number three. Okay, and task number four. So keeping the output values as they are, change your code so the values are printed in a 10 by 10 table. Give your table the border one property so that you can see the cells. It needs to look like that. All right, so 10 by 10 to make up the 100. All right, let's give that a try. Okay, so in our code, we need to use the table HTML. Let's go and make ourselves a table. And of course that table we use the border equals one so we can see some lines for our cells. Now our table has of course tr and then td for the cells. That's how we create our borders uh, for our 100, our 10 by 10 grid. And to do this we have to do two for loops. We need one for loop to count to 10 which will have each of the columns. Another for loop to do each of the rows. So to do this, we're going to need to do two for loops. So let's do our first one at the start here. So we can probably copy our existing code. 
we can go 4i is 1 to 10. Do this. We'll close off our AMP script code block and we'll start our rows. This is our first for loop starting off and our first row starts off. Now we need to count to 10 for each of the columns. So now do a second integer. Let's use x for our second integer. And again, we're going to count to 10. Now we count to 10 and do each of the 10 cells. And then of course we need to end that for loop. So we can close off our for loop by starting a code block and going next x to close off that one. Now of course when the total row finishes, all 10 of the cells are finished, we then close off the row and start our next row, which is the next i. Okay, perfect. So we've got that working. Let's now see if it works by outputting the value that we're counting through. So let's go percent percent equals v equals percent percent and we'll do i to start with and then we'll do a comma and then x. So we can see each of these numbers as we're counting up. Let's give this a try to make sure our code works. That's our code there. Let's just give this one quick try to make sure that our for loops are structured correctly. Okay, so one by one up to 10 by 10, perfect. So now that we've got that grid working, it's definitely one to one, 10 to 10. We need to count from one to 100. All right, so we go back into our code. Let's try and count from one to 100. Okay, so inside our code block, we now need to count from one to 100. So let's make a code block here. And inside our code block, we're gonna to have to make some math functions to count now. This is gonna be our first one here, which is our row counter and it's our column counter. So our row counter could be our multiply by 10 and then our column counter is our integer, our next line down. So what we can do is we can go set number be equal to, we can multiply, we can take our row and multiply it by 10. And then to that we can add our X value. So we can go, add that plus x. There's one thing though, if we press play now with our number being our value to output inside of our cell, you see one thing that's wrong here. We're starting at one for our column count, which means to start off, we'll be starting at 10. That's no good, we've gone 10 over. We have to go back a step and change our row counter from starting from one to start from zero and go to nine. There we are. This way it counts from 0 up to 9, 1 to 10. Did my math just right, we should now have a count from 1 all the way to 100. Perfect. All right, now let's apply our rules for fizzbuzz. So for our rules for fizzbuzz, we've now got our number to test. So we can now say if our number value, and we mod our number value by 15, and if there's nothing left over, then we can set output to be equal to fizz buzz. Else if our number is a mod value of five, then we know it's gonna be buzz. Else if our mod value is for three, then it's gonna be fizz. And of course, else, nothing else, then we're going to set our output to be equal to our number. Okay, there we are. And of course we then change your output to instead say output. Just like that. Okay, so now we've got if 15 then fizz buzz, if five then buzz, if three then fizz, else set output equals number. And if of course, and there we go. Let's give it a try. Hey, there we are. One, two, fizz, four, buzz, fizz, looking good, all the way up to 98, 98, 100. All right, all done. Okay, and back on our brief, we have one final task. Task five, keeping the fizz buzz game logic, change your 10 by 10 table so that it outputs numbers from one to 100 in the background of each cell reflects the rules of fizz buzz as follows. So, where was fizz, we now use a background color of red. Where it's buzz, we use green, and when it's fizz buzz, we use blue. You can see that there. And of course, when there's no fizz buzz match, we just leave the background as white. 
Okay, so we'll keep our border property. We will force each cell to be 20 pixels in height and width, so it forms a nice square. All right, let's give that task number five a go. Okay, so back on our email, let's try out task number five. So we're gonna be outputting the numbers from one to 100 this time, and not outputting the words fizzbuzz. There's one other condition. We do want to make the height and width of our cell it's going to be 20, so we can say height equals 20 pixels and width equals 20 pixels. We also want a background color, so we can say BG color to be equal to something. All right, so to do this, we have to put some more math in here. Now, unfortunately, we have got our calculations after our cell starts, so I'll just swap that around. So what we might do is we might take our cell and put that down the bottom here. We then put our calculations at the top of our for loop. There we are. And of course, that's our counting number. We have our rules here, which was setting the output. But rather than setting output, we could now set the background color. So let's now set background color. If it was fizz buzz, then the color that we have to use is going to be red, blue, green. Let's have a look. Blue, it's going to be fizz buzz. So go back onto our email. So if it's fizz buzz, then we'll set our color to be blue. Now if the color is going to be for buzz, then we use green. So we'll change our one there to be green, which means red for fizz. And if nothing else, then we can change our BG color value to be equal to white. All right, just like that. That's our background color set. And of course, our number is our output. So of course, we need to keep our number in place. We can now change the background color. So let's move our number back inside of our cell, just like that. BG color. So we need to output our BG color, like that. Copy our value into background color. And there we go, that should do it. So our script starts and then stops. We've got our cell, which is 20 pixels in size. We're counting up to 100, yes we are. And then our end of table, fantastic. Let's give that a go. All right, looking pretty good. So one, two, fizz, buzz, and of course fizz, buzz for blue. Let's check it out. So it went red, green, blue, red, green, blue. Fantastic. You can see here the same pattern red, green, and blue on 15, 45, and 75. 15, perfect. That is task five complete. And that's it. Exercise number two, AMP script for loops complete. You can check out the code in the answer section of this briefing document. And I hope you've enjoyed the exercise today. You've now got some more experience and exposure to how you can use AMP script for loops in your emails and cloud pages. And if you did enjoy the exercise today, then make sure you give this video a like and let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you can be notified when I release more Salesforce Marketing Cloud content.